we got a new panel. We got three panelists here. We got uh, Ivo Sanen, who is the managing director of Portwise. We got uh, Fadi Amudi, who is the CEO and entrepreneur starting IQ Robotics. And Olivier Laurent, who is the regional head of business development for DHL Global Forwarding here in the region. This session is about, is around a term, how do we future-proof what we do in the industry? Is it really possible to future-proof? What exactly is it that we should future-proof? I mean, the industry has not been short of larger disruptive events the last five years. How do you see technology being able to help us to manage and become more resilient in the face of turbulence in geopolitics, in sustainability, and supply chain fragmentation. Let me start with the first one, uh, resiliency, resiliency, which is, I guess, in the light of what happened the last five years, with first the pandemic and then all kind of uh, geopolitical tensions and wars disrupting supply chains is very important. Um, in our design practice of container terminals, because that's what we do, uh, we help our customers, global terminal operators, in coming up with um, the best terminal designs that uh, for the future, that are also future-proof. And that future-proofing has changed with this knowledge of the last five years. Changed in a way that you build in capability to handle a wider range of scenarios that could be faced in the, let's say, foreseeable future. So where our past practice always was based on a set of assumptions. It was with a very little degree of variation. And so together with customers, you would paint the future of what would this terminal look like? What are the cargo flows? What are the dwell times? What are the peak factors? Blah, blah, blah. How would an optimal terminal then look like? Now we're going in with a much wider range of scenarios that could be the future. One of the things we have seen in this um, post-pandemic is an in enormous increase in dwell time. Especially in the US, but also in Europe, terminals were completely filled with containers. Everywhere where they could put a container, they were putting a container. So nobody had foreseen this. Nobody had foreseen that the hinterland transportation couldn't deal with the volumes. Terminals couldn't deal with the, the blockage of con containers not going out. So building in more resilience into the design so that you are capable to deal with those variations that maybe are not so foreseeable is clearly uh, one of our tasks that we have taken up. Second point is how we address the three points you, you mentioned, sustainability. One of our spear points since a couple of years has been to help terminals operate in a sustainable way. I mean, Olivier is looking at the supply chain and choosing the best modes of transport throughout, let's say, the, the, the shipper to the end consumer. We're looking inside facilities, warehouses, distribution centers, container terminals, how to electrify, how to source green energy, how to create local energy when there is a shortage of power to that facility. Because many facilities want to electrify, but there is not enough power. I was talking to a customer a few weeks ago in, uh, on the US West Coast, where obviously uh, the focus on clean energy is the strongest in the world, I think. And they were planning to buy 60 terminal trucks and charge them with one megawatt chargers. Uh, these days, that's kind of the fastest chargers we see for trucks, one megawatt. And they were planning to charge them all at the same time during the lunch break. But I tell you, you want to black out Los Angeles? You cannot do that. That power is currently not available. So you have to come up with much smarter solutions to enable electrification, hence less local emissions, to get to a fluent operation with this new type of equipment. It's not a simple ride in the park. So we assist in coming up with workable, financially viable solutions that also enable um, more sustainability in, in those kind of facilities. Thank you.